Hey everybody, tonight we're going to be doing a tooled leather tumbler and I do things a little bit different and I'm going to show you why and show you some tips that may help you when you're doing your wrap for your tool die. Um, it helps me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn you down and I'll show you the things that I do and I'll also show you the process. Now I always uh, tape the top and the bottom of my cup. I sand it, I clean it, and I spray paint it. And I spray paint it with a flat white paint. So that's what we've got to start with tonight. And then I'll show you how I did my actual design for the uh, tooled leather look. So I'm gonna turn you down and we're gonna get started. And I'm also going to see if I can get you on the computer. So give me just a minute. And just remember that when I'm doing lives, I do not answer questions during the process. Um, any of you that watch me, you know that. You know I go back after the live and then um, do that. So um, I've got you pulled up. Man, I just can't believe how well this is pulling up in a hurry and getting things going. That's great. So um, now what we're going to do, uh, the tumbler, of course, I'll show you that. I'm waiting for it to get on the screen so I can see and make sure I've got the camera where you can see the tumbler and see the pattern. Okay, I think I've got you. Okay, now this is my pattern that I use. Before I do that, don't forget to always fix you a card and uh, put the type tumbler you're doing, the colors you use on it, and all the details. But back to the pattern now this is the pattern that i used i went ahead uh this is one that i put several things together to make one pattern that i wanted to use and then i cut it all the way around so that i can see the edges of it when i put it on my tumbler and then i always when i know i'm going to have a large one i'll cut my release tape in half and i put half on and then I lap the other half over. And that way, when I put it on my tumbler, I can start pulling it from one side in the center and work it out from the center around each side. And then you see these marks on each side. I know that's where it's gonna overlap. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you on the tumbler right quick, but what I'll do where I've made these marks, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut this part out, which is all around where it doesn't cut the pattern at all but it's where that then I can go back and place these on where they're needed to make it look right without them overlapping and touching each other. But when I place it on my cup and I get this in the center, and I take it all the way to the top, and then when I wrap it around, you can see where that does overlap some the way the pattern is. So that's the reason I'm gonna go in and cut this out and then I can move it around the way I want it to make it fit so that you can't tell that it's overlapping. So that's the reason I'm doing that, but I wanna just explain that to you. And then I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna cut these apart. And I'm cutting it around where it does not cut the pattern at all. Because you don't want to cut your pattern and mess it up. So that's what I'm doing. Don't want to cut my pattern. So I just sort of made me a mark so I'd know where to cut. And like I said, this is a pattern where I just Googled tool, S, let's say SVG tooled leather patterns. And that's where I came up with several and I'll put several together to make the one that I wanted. And I'm going to be using, I'm planning on three inks. I've set four out just in case uh, I decide to use another one. But I've got three that I'm planning on using. And I'll give you those colors in just a minute. And um, Black Bear Glitters uh, is now selling the uh, Tim Holtz Ranger Alcohol Inks. And that's the inks that I'll be using from Tim Holtz uh, at Black Bear Glitters. Okay. Now you can see where I cut those two sides out. And then uh, the colors that I'm going to be using. Uh, the last color that I will use is the darkest, which is Espresso. 
the middle color that I will use is um, teak wood. And then the color that I plan to start out with is caramel, caramel, whatever how you want to say it. And then I do have the latte sitting here. Uh, I think the latte will be a little bit lighter than I want even to begin with. So that's the reason I set it out, but I don't know that I'll use it. And now I'm going to place my pattern. Let me see if I can get the light down a little bit. See if that helps. And if you'll see the reason I've got this little piece in here stuck in there, because that way where it overlaps, it helps me find that spot and makes it easier for me to pull it up when I get ready to start working on the actual pattern. And I'm lining it up, if you can see, right against my tape line where I taped it off here. So that's where I'm starting. And I'm going to put my tape to hold it once I get it on there. And then I'll also take the bottom because I want that to stay in place once I start. So I'm going to tape it at the bottom, trying to make sure I've sort of got it straight. And then I'm going to tape it on this side because I'm going to pull from the other side. And that way, as I'm working with it, it won't slip, hopefully. Famous last words. Oh, let me get that. I don't want that tape to be in the way, and I just put it, let's do it this way. That may be lapped over a little bit too far, so I don't want that. So we'll do it this way. And let that catch it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to, once we get the tape down the way that you want it, then you can go back and when you start pulling it, you'll pull this off and cut it. Make sure it's sticking good. And I did rub this with a squeegee really good before I started. But when you've got so many little pieces, it's just hard to get them all to come up at one time. Now we're going to cut this right here for now and then you'll see how I do the other. So that way you're not working with quite as much to begin with when you're trying to get it to stick. And you always want to rub, hold this back and then as you rub it, make sure you're rubbing it all the way top to bottom. section. What we'll do, we'll make sure that it all picks up. One section right there. You can see it's 
I don't want it to pull up because it's okay now you can see where that lifted up and it makes this easier to finish here now what I'll do is we'll go ahead and pull this and right here you can see it's right there it's sticking to this tape so I'm gonna pull that right up out of the way now that we've got it started get that tape out of our way lay that back down then we'll pull it and when you're pulling it off you want to pull it and keep it laying close to your cup and that will help keep it laying down better than if you just pull it up like this so i'm gonna pull it lightly then we've got to get this part down here started let me get my right there you can see where it's on this tape so i'm going to lift it up pull the tape off just like we did on the other side lay that back down rub it good and now we'll start pulling that side Try to keep it laying close to your cup. You can see where we've got that part on there. And now we'll see which side I want to go from. I think I'll put the tape back on a little further over and we'll go from the other side. Pull this tape off. I'm just putting it back on there just as a precaution to help hold some of the spots. And again, this is where we trimmed it so we could go put in the other insert pieces to make it look like it fits rather than cutting straight through some of the pieces. We'll trim this side off first. laying it down again like we did on the other side okay now that that's stuck we can move these pieces of tape get them out of our way where you can see what I'm doing and remember I'll go back and answer any questions after the live is over okay now when we start pulling this off we'll have to make sure as we pull it up that everything's sticking right here's one that's not wanting to stick here on this edge there we go and it laid down so 
Draw one right in there. Right down there is one that's not sticking. There. Just have to keep working with it. Do it slowly. Because if you mess up with your pieces, it's a lot harder to put them back in after the fact. See, I'll show you the one that's sticking. See right there? That's sticking, and I've got to get it to where it'll lay down. Because I don't want to pull it up anymore till that lays down. Have to be patient and keep working with it. wrong it's sticking to the actual backing let me see if I can show you where it's doing that sometimes that happens see right there it's sticking to the actual backing so I've got to separate it from that so there we go if you saw what I did I just put my weeding tool up under there and turned it loose. Now it's coming off. Let's see. I see a spot right there that doesn't have any release tape on it, so I'm going to cut it here. And then that way I can see that spot to work with it a little bit easier. That spot's right there. You see that spot right there? So, now with what we've got so far, I'm going to go back in and start working on it, rubbing it down. A little bit at the time. And then that spot right there, I'm going to cut a little piece of this tape that I had where I pulled it off. And we'll put it on that spot and fix it. There we go. Now, okay. this off. Once we get it off, then we can go back and start adding the pieces to fill in. Remember, you want to hold it close to your cup as you pull it off so it helps to keep from pulling the pieces up that you've already stuck down. to your cup. When you lift up on it, that's when it's more apt to actually pull your design off. Right there, it's wanting to lift a little bit, so let me rub it back down. your time. This part's very important because you don't want to pull up your design. Okay. Now, we've got that part. And if you can see right here is a wrinkle in that little piece right there. So I'm going to fix that. 
and I will stick my weeding tool up under it and just lift it a little bit at the time a little bit at the time We got that, so we've got this spot right in here that we don't have anything. So that's where we're going to take these pieces and decide what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart. Uh, okay. And I think I'm going to put one of these right in here. And I'm going to take this one so it will fit right in this space right in here. down good and you'll be able to see the pattern more when I get the ink on it and we're gonna put another one of these smaller ones right in here and you just have to sort of eyeball it and see exactly where you want to put it and then I'm going to put one in this space right down here at the bottom and then you'll never know that we cut it apart can see where we've got it on there and it just all mingles together now there's one spot I saw right in here at the top that I'm gonna take my knife I'm gonna get my really good knife out you want a sharp one and where this is overlapping my tape right in here I'm gonna go ahead and cut that now and pull it off out of the way So you can see where I cut that and pulled it off out of the way. And check around and see if there's any other places that you need to do that. Um, I don't see that any of the others are touching the tape. Okay. So out of all that, we had this one piece left. So we used all the parts except for that. And we can save that for another tumbler. You never know when you might just want to stick it on there. Okay, now let's put on our gloves. We know how messy ink is. Now these are cheaper gloves like I told you the other night that I got to use when I'm using ink or glue or paint or something like that. This is not the gloves that I use when I'm doing epoxy. Um, I just like the other gloves better. Okay. Now I've got my rough bristle brush. And this just came from Walmart in a pack. Um, we're going to start with the lighter color. We're going to start with the, uh, let me find it, the caramel. And I've got just some little things that 
something I bought. Those were stuck in there, and I'm just going to use those and put some ink in it. And then I'm going to dab my brush in it, and then we're just going to start brushing it on. No rhyme or reason. Just brush it on. Now, this is a 651 permanent vinyl, but I'm still not going to dig real hard with my brush. I'm going to do it easy. And we'll put this a coat of this color all over the tumbler. And then we'll go back with the medium color. And you're going to have some spots that are darker than others. And that's what you want. Uh, you don't want the spots to be all the same. If you've ever looked at tooled leather, you know that's the way the leather looks. And usually as you go around your cup, when you start again with the next color, that section is going to be dry enough that you can go ahead and go in with the next color. And remember, I don't answer questions uh, while I'm doing the live. Uh, I go back and answer any questions or any comments after the live is over so don't be offended and don't think I'm ignoring you because I will go back and answer I try to answer every question and every comment after the live I knew this one was going to take a little longer than most of the lives that I do so that's the reason I'll trying to speed it up a little bit. And I don't guess you would have to use permanent vinyl when you put your design on. Um, I think it's better because you are rubbing against the vinyl so much with your brush because you're doing so many coats of the ink. Personally, I feel like it would stay on better because you're not going to be pulling it off. You're going to leave it on. And doing this takes a lot more ink than doing a wood grain. And I'm glad that Black Bear Glitters is now selling the uh, alcohol ink. That way when I send an order, I can get it all in one place. And they're really adding a lot of products all along to what they have. The different textures of ink and different textures of glitter. Okay, now you can sort of see what it looks like. And when you do it, you're not trying to do any kind of a, a wood grain look. Um, you're just doing it to apply the ink. Now we're going to go in with the medium color. And remember, alcohol ink splatters everywhere when you're using these rough brushes but they just work much better I think with the inks especially if you're doing 
a wood grain or even doing this technique. I think this one's going to be real pretty. I don't know if you noticed what I have on it. Uh, in the middle is a cross that says Amazing Grace. And that was a, a file that I got by itself. And then the other files, I just pulled them from different ones to make it work in the design that I wanted. There's so many out there that you can get off of Etsy. Etsy, ever how you want to pronounce it. I think it's Etsy. And then, of course, this, once we get the ink on it, then I'll dry it a little with the blow heat gun with the air, and, um, and then we'll start pulling some of the ink off. And the good thing about this, when you start pulling it off, if you pull too much off, you can go back and put it back on and then start pulling it off again. And this is a lot like when you're doing a crackle cup. Uh, once you've your ink is wet on there and you go down, you don't want to go back over it too many times because then it starts lightening it and pulling it off. So just remember that. The more you rub it, the more it starts pulling it back off. And I can show you in a spot like, like that. See how it starts lightening it up and pulling it off the more you rub on it? So you don't want to do that. You want to just make your strokes and get it on there. And around the bottom here, where the the uh, tape is. You want to make sure that you've got it there. Uh, if you do not tape off your top and bottom, that's fine. Uh, you do it the way you want to, and in that case, you go all the way over it, and then you got to make sure that you do the bottom, and then you roll it around the bottom so that it looks good, if that's the preference you have of doing a tumbler. And that's okay, because everybody does everything different. Uh, I've just found over the years that 95% of the cups that I see that um, get cracks, they're always around this section in the bottom 95% of the time because they're dropped or bumped, and that's where the crack is. And sometimes it's where it can be repaired, and sometimes it's not. Okay, now you can see darker in spots and lighter in spots, and that's what you want. Now we're going to go to our darkest color, which is the espresso. And I always close my inks up when I get through, because if you don't, get all over you. And today I did a, a boo-boo that I have asked y'all and taught y'all not to do. I was working on... Uh, some things with some real fine glitter and wasn't thinking I had my heater on here under the table where I work and it just blew that fine glitter all over me so I told my husband he's just gonna have to call me sparkles tonight because I'm just sparkling all over till I get in the shower and hopefully it's gonna come off then so now this is the espresso. That we're putting on now and it's really dark. And I'm just doing a very light 
very light with my brush. Very light. I just don't know how I can get that light to where that glare is not going to be so bad on there. See if that helped any. Now this ink, I'm noticing that it mixing with the other inks, it's like it um, pulls away from the other inks a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, especially where the vinyl is. It's like it um, is repelling against the vinyl. So, see if I can put it on a little bit heavier. Remember, very light strokes. I'm going to put a little bit more. Just go around your cup and look at it and see if there's any spots that you think it needs a little bit more and just put it on there very light strokes you don't want to do it heavy I'm just barely letting my brush lay on there at this point because you don't want to pull off what you've already put on if you can see right there you can see where it's separating and like it's sort of repelling the other ink and I've not had that happen before <coughs> Can you see right in there where it's sort of separating? So, I think what I'll do now, I'll go back and put one of the other inks back on it and see if I can cover that up. I'll go back with the middle color that we used, which was the, uh, the teak wood. <clears throat> okay, I'm going back with the teak wood now. Simply because that seems to be repelling just a little bit. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to put on there. Now we're going to dry it a little bit with the heat gun. And then we'll go back in with just a rag paper towel with alcohol on it. And at that point, then we'll start pulling some of it back off. So I'm just going to dry it now. <clears throat> And one good thing about this, um, if I were not doing a live, I would just leave this and let it set overnight and not even do anything else to it tonight. But since we're doing the live, I want to go ahead and pull some of it off so then the next time we're together, we can put the epoxy on. Now what I'm going to do, I just took a paper towel and cut it up and cut it in little squares so that then I could just fold it. And um, I'm using 70% uh, alcohol that I'm going to wet this with. And 
and I'm going to blot some of it on another one and then we're just going to start pulling it just lightly and you can see how it's pulling the ink off and you're going to have some spots that are lighter and some spots that are darker and that's okay that's the look that normally people want the look I'm going for now I don't like how light this spot is so I am going to go back and put a little bit more back on that and I'll dry it and then we'll come back and take some more off don't want it quite that light so we'll let that section dry while we're going over the other now I'm going to go to a different rag put just a little bit on let it get good and wet and remember, you want light strokes. You don't want it heavy. And I'm not pressing hard at all. Put a little bit more alcohol on. Press it against another rag because you don't want it just straight on there. You want your the rag that you're using damp with it. You don't want it saturated with it. Just rolling it around and looking and seeing if it's what I want. I think I'm going to turn it up this way and pull some this way. <coughs> Excuse me. And I would not suggest using any kind of a, <coughs> excuse me, cotton ball or cotton pad or anything like that when pulling your alcohol ink off because it will stick to your cup and you will not be able to get it off and you'll have a mess. Okay, I think I'm pretty well happy. There you can see the amazing grace. See the design on each side. And that's the part that was by itself. And then I went back and then just added these other designs. This is what the tumbler looks like now. And I see a spot right, where did I see that? I just saw where the, right here. Can you see right here where that vinyl's sticking up? right there. I'll have to try to press that down because if I put epoxy on it and that's sticking up then it will have to be sanded down anyway. So once this dries then I'll go in in that spot that's sticking up right there uh, then I'll go in and fix it. See it's right here. You can see that little corner sticking up and this is permanent vinyl that I used and I was not rough with the cup at all applying the alcohol ink but this is a tooled leather tumbler and this is the first step and then the next step we'll put alcohol uh, we'll put epoxy on the alcohol ink and then um, it may have to have a second coat but we'll see 
but I hope y'all have a good evening. And if you have any questions, like I said, I will go in and I will answer your questions. If I don't get them all done tonight, well, then I will go in uh, tomorrow and answer them. So y'all have a great evening and we will talk to you later. Bye. Hey, hey, everybody. We're going to finish up our tool leather. It won't take long. We're just going to put epoxy on it. And I'm going to show you just a quick little thing I did to fix uh, where the vinyl, that one spot I... Oh, man. That one little spot where the vinyl was sticking up. And I'm going to show you that. And I'll show you how I fix that. So I'm going to turn you down. And then when I get you down, I'm going to see if I can get um, you up on the computer. Thing in frame. So give me just a minute to do that. And just remember that when I do lives, um, after questions, during answer questions, um, after the live is over, or if I don't do it tonight, I'll do it first thing in the morning or sometime tomorrow. Let me see if we can get you pulled up. Here we go. Let's see if this is the right one. No, that's part one. How does it spin working? Let's see what we did different. Give me just a minute. Let's see. Remember, we got a delay, so we'll have to sort of allow for our delay. See if we can get it to work. Oh. Well, it's not coming up right now, so we'll wait just a little bit and see if we can get it fixed so let me see I think I can tell a little bit about where we got it but let me find that spot and show it to you uh, it is let me get the light turned down see if that'll help a little bit and luckily I noticed it too you've already got epoxy on it but that little spot right there was sticking up so all I did was take just a little dab of Mod Podge and I put that on it so that that would help hold it in player. So that's the only thing I did to that. So tonight we are going to we'll, uh, pull the tape. Let's see if I can get this to, I don't know why it's not going in for some reason. There we go. Tighten it up a little bit. Give me just a shake. I'm going to log out of the group and then log back in, see if that helps any. And I've already mixed my epoxy. Um, as you know, I spoons. I use, this is a 30 ounce, so I and a tablespoon of B. And I used a new stir tonight that I got from Black Bear Glitters. To see what I think about it. I think it's got metal in it and it's covered in silicone because it's real stiff. It's not flimsy. Uh, and you can see a little frothy looking like sometimes it is when I do it. It's 66 degrees uh, in my studio right now. So that's not very warm. My epoxy revendy. And you don't think that that can make a big difference, but it sure can. Um, Okay, I keep finding part one, but I don't see part two. Let me look back right here. Um, it's recording. So I don't know. But anyway, we'll go from here. And um, what I'll do now is get with uh, the top, and then I'll heat my cup just a little bit to help it flow a little bit better. Since it's cold down here, the cup is cool. So, quick with a torch. And with this silicone, all you've got to do is wipe it off with a baby wipe. And then it's ready to go again. So, you can't leave your epoxy on there and let it dry. Um, unless you want to clean it up later. And then it will peel off to silicone. So, that's one thing about it. It won't stick to it. So, it will come off other things that you might use. It's turning. There we go. Heating it up just a little bit. And then remember, I always use a trusty little card with the type tumbler that I'm doing. And I also list on there uh, 
the different products that I'm using, the color. So now we've got that epoxy cleared up really clear. And I'm just barely rubbing because I don't want to dig on my design. I'm just barely rubbing it. Usually I really rub it, if you know, on there. I'm just letting my hand sort of lay on it and I'm rubbing it back and forth. Doing it very light. Very lightly. I'll make sure I got it all the way around the bottom down to where my tape is. And like I told you the other night, this will probably have to have two coats simply because it does not have any epoxy on it. And uh, I always like to have at least two coats and sometimes three. All this one had on it was the paint, the decal, and the alcohol ink. So for that reason, I do want to put more than just. So once I put that second coat on it in the morning, then I will post it as a finished product so that you can see it. But I will put that last coat on there before I post it. And we will pull the tape while I've got you on here. And epoxy self-leveling. So this I will hit. I'll give it time for any little bubbles to come to the top. And then I leave a little bit of epoxy in my cup so that if any fish eyes pop up on there, I can just let a drop of epoxy drop on the fish eye. And usually that will take care of it. I won't say 100%. Most of the time it will. There that dropped. That I'm wiping up. Okay, let's let it turn just a little bit, and I'll, in the meantime, go back and see one more time if I can get you to pull up. We may have to just wait until it's, um, I see it's going on and off again. I don't know why it's doing that, because it's been doing really, really good. So, uh, I just then turned upside down so I could see it turning and see if you could see it, and I saw that it was going on and off again, so... I apologize for that, but if you've got any questions, then you can go back and uh, I'll get you some answers if you can see what's happening between it going on and off. Uh, uh, I did turn, <clears throat> excuse me, I did turn the cellular off of my phone. I don't know if that had something to do with it um, or not, so... Try it one more time. No, it's just not going to come up on my computer tonight, y'all. So I'll go in and uh, look at it afterwards. But I'm going to go ahead now. Uh, let me hit it with a torch right quick. And remember, when you're using your, you want to keep it moving on your cup. Do not leave it because it will um, burn it. You don't want to burn it. And definitely wet be very very careful about using your uh my turner's trying to see if i can get it to go the other way there we go i'll have still heard or not that rick had an episode over the weekend and had to go in the hot have a heart cath um that his blockage was not bad enough that he had to have stents or surgery but um, they think they can take care of it with medicine, so. And sort of be easy on him about any orders of anything that you've got because make it easy for a few days. Um, he's not, and uh, I know the doctor told my husband when he had his, uh, as far as a diet, he told him, he said, if it tastes good, spit it out. And that's the diet you're gonna be on, so. Uh, he does fudge on his diet some now, but uh, that's his decision. I don't make that decision. Um, when we go out and eat, I won't decide where we're going to eat. I always let him decide because he's the one that has the health problems, not me. So that way he's making the decision on his own. So Rick, you're going to have to make some decisions about how you're going to eat. 
And that way, Kelly, you won't have the blame. <laughs> That's what I learned anyway. Okay, now we've got that, and let me get some of this stuff out of our way. And I don't see any fish eyes right now. That does not mean that, you know, something might repel and something pop up as it turns a little bit because it is sort of cool down here. But um, I'm going to get some of this paper out of the way. And then I'll hold it up so you can see it a little bit better. I don't want the paper getting stuck on my cup. So I'm just going to slide it over out of the way. And then I'll turn this around. And um, I just have to hope I've got it where you can see it. Uh, I know there's a glare on there. But I can't see it on the computer, so. Anyway, but we'll get you a better picture. Uh tomorrow after I get uh, the final coat of epoxy on it and um, we'll get you a photo on there and show you the final product but I love the way it turned out I think it turned out really really pretty now I told you this would be a short live tonight it was only 13 minutes so now everybody can get to working or either go spend time with your family so y'all have a great night and enjoy your family. Let me get that flare up out of my face. That's where I had that fluorescent light on my work. So y'all have a good rest of the evening. And I don't know what happened to the internet again tonight. But um, I hope it was where you could at least get a little bit about what went on. Because this part, all it was was just putting our epoxy on basically. So y'all have a great evening. And then we'll announce what we're going to do. I had somebody that wanted a, another kind of a wood grain with some glitter. And also a fishing lure. Uh, I do my fishing lures a little bit different than most people that I've seen them. So um, if anybody has any type fishing lure that you would like to see just put it in the comments and then I'll look up that lure and see what it looks like and see if it's something I think we can do so y'all have a blessed evening bye now hey everybody uh, this is the finished product from the tooled leather tumbler that we did we did it in two parts and I had told you when I got the last coat of epoxy on that I would come back and show you the tumbler so it's turning this morning with the last coat on it and um, we did it with alcohol ink and the ink uh, I purchased it at Black Bear Glitters and uh, I used three different colors I used espresso and I used caramel and I used teak wood I did the caramel first as the light color the teak wood next and then I did the espresso so those are the colors that we used and this is the leather uh tooled leather tumbler that we did so y'all enjoy the rest of your day and i'll get back with you and let you know what we're going to be doing monday night see ya